The entire world is in an uproar because of this whole DDG and Halley situation. And I thought this was going to be a good time for me to explain four reasons why marriages fail and relationships end. Because this was bound to happen. Now, if y'all remember this whole situation, and I don't usually follow pop culture, but I love me some Chloe and Halley. I really do. So I was very invested in Halley's relationship with DDG. At the time, I had no idea who DDG was, but I was a fan of Halley. Um, I am one of those folks who watch Grownish because that's my show. And so just watching the evolution of them and how they've grown the two sisters, um, I was bound to just kind of read into her life. And so we knew that DDG was not the faithfulest person, uh, speculations, right? Was not the most faithful, but... Hallie was always going to stand by her man, all right? I was very surprised when these two had a baby um, or was having a baby, and I knew she was pregnant just because the way in which they would never try to show her stomach. Um, it was no surprise there. And she's a very sweet girl uh, from what we see. But typically, relationships don't work if you already had a problem that was never resolved. I'm not going to sit here and say DDG doesn't love his son. I'm not going to sit here and say they don't love their son. I'm not going to sit here and say they're not friends, but there was very apparent and it's hard when you're in the public eye, but there's apparent things that are happening in their relationship that was so covered up. Right. Um, but outside of the relationship, we too have these problems as regular, regular people that I want to shed light on before I move into number one. I want to say, hey, 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 Conscious Crew, welcome back to the Conscious Creative Corner, where we are unpacking your trauma to heal your relationships. I am your host, C the Transparent Therapist. Now, these four reasons, especially the last one, is something that we don't really think about because you always think like, oh, relationships are breaking up because this person cheated or um, they're not faithful to me. But truly, there's so many underlying things that, that make a relationship not work, especially marriages. So firstly, one of the reasons a, a marriage or relationship might not work is because your goals don't align. Usually when people come into my office, couples, um, I used to ask them, hey, what's his goal in life? What's his five-year plan? And she would, people would fumble, right? She might be like, hmm, I'm not really sure. Or he might be like, I don't know. She always talk about this, but you know, you know how she is. And that's a clear indicator that your goals of wanting to help your partner reach a goal does not align. We talk a lot of a lot about that in Gottman therapy. If you guys are familiar with the Gottman couple, um, they are one of the greatest. I I learned underneath them. They're one of the greatest um, couple forces that help teach other couples how to have healthy relationships. He, um, got, John Gottman is actually one of the people that coined um, the phrases or just the concept that two thirds of relationship conflicts or problems are usually not solvable. So that means that only a third of those conflicts are solvable. And usually those people that are working through issues that aren't solvable, they just come to an understanding of, hey, this is what it's going to be like, but these are the things I'm going to put in place so it doesn't feel hard. So. Let's say you're with a partner and I don't know what this looked like for DDG and Hallie. Okay. This is, I'm just speculating, but let's say you're with a partner and one partner is just like, okay, we're going to get together. But in five years, I want kids. Actually, this happened in real life with one of my, uni my one of my um, clients. They want, he wanted kids. She wanted kids. I'm sorry. And he did not. Right. But he was not forthcoming with that. He was just like, sure. The five year mark came. Now they're in my office and they're saying, well, I thought we wanted to have more kids because they already had kids already. And he was just like, well, yeah, that was five years ago. Things change. That's something that would really break up a unit, because if you're going into this relationship of marriage and you're thinking like, well, at the five year mark, we're going to have a second child. And now you can't even have a second child because your partner is unwilling. That puts a rift in relationships. And even if we're not even thinking about goals as far as children go, we can be thinking about goals like home ownership. We can think about goals like moving or relocating. And then when that mark comes and we're, we're reassessing and realizing like, wait, your goals don't match my goals anymore. There's tension that builds and that tension doesn't make good for a foundation that's supposed to last a long time. And so I don't know the situation here with Hallie and DDG, but what I do know is sometimes we're in these relationships and we're not doing check-ins. I tell the couples I work with, I tell people I work with, individuals, the women, when you're with your partner, it's so important that we have quarterly meetings. All right. Because at the end of the day, you are in a partnership. 
And what does partnership look like? And business partnership looks like, hey, we are constantly having these conversations. We understand that the business always changes. So we need to be on the same page. Same thing here. You're in a partnership with a person. The relationship is always going to change. So you need to be on that same page. So that means I'm going to come to you every quarter and even more, which would be more beneficial. I'm going to come to you and ask, hey, do your goals look the same? Do they align the same? Do Are we on the same page? Because if at any point I can get a, a, above or ahead of the problem before it becomes a problem, we can probably make this thing work too. The second reason, we play the blame game a lot. And sometimes we get so comfortable with our partners that we start to tell our partners that they're the reason that we aren't where we want to be and they're the reason for our downfall. Again, this whole DDG situation, I remember he put out a statement saying like, you know, we just decided that this is the best. Um, we're going to be the best co-parents. Wonderful. But I'm wondering if there was any blame, like any kind of blame games going on there, right? Uh, again, I'm just straight speculation, okay? I don't know DGG in his career. I don't know Hallie in her career, but I'm wondering if any of them at any point says like, you're holding me back from being my best self. Or let's say us normal folks who are not in the entertainment world, all right? Maybe somebody loses a job and they're like, you're the reason why I don't got this job anymore. You wanted me at home cleaning the house. You want me to be at home, maybe having these kids and now I don't got a job. You're the reason. This blame game then puts in resentment and this resentment is going to last a long time, which is why you should always pair yourself with like a coach or someone that's like me or someone that's like, oh, me too, who can help you through some of these issues, especially when you join a free program that is going to help you unburden some of these stressors, process some of these things that you have deep down that you have not addressed before. Because my the program that I'm speaking about is called the Trauma Transition Elite Program. And that's where women who desire to have long lasting relationships are able to connect with themselves, but then connect with people who are just like them. And we go through and we have these talks and we have these sessions where we're doing therapeutic things, um, therapeutic techniques that are evidence-based and evidence driven that help you to put yourself into this place where you are no longer living out of a wounded place, but a healed place or a healing place because healing is everlasting, right? We're always evolving. We're always healing. And if you're that kind of person that says, look, my business is great, or I'm I'm a leader in my, you know, my fields, or I'm in this career and my money is great, but I just can't find this man, uh, my partner that I want to be with because I keep choosing the wrong person. This is the same guy, different face. This program is for you. Check the description box below. But I digress. So the blame game happens ever so often, and we are now finding ourselves just looking at our partner in disgust because we are making them the reason why we aren't where we want to be. We are attributing all the horrible things that have happened to us because of them. And that is why we don't really last in our relationships because we need someone to place a blame on. And if we aren't 100% self-aware, it's so easy for us to say like, yep, they're the reason why I'm not where I want to be. And so then they become an out. We get divorced. We split up. We find a different partner, but then that cycle just continues because we haven't really addressed the real problem at hand. Number three, possibility here. So they have baby Halo and we do know that parenting has no handbook. We can read all the books in the world, but we never know what our child is going to be like. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen people come into the office or just kind of hit me up and say like, look, my husband and I have different, or even myself, right? When I first had my first child, they're like, we have different parenting styles and we can't get it right, right? Because then that parent who comes in is like, hey, we're so different. I can't get it right. It causes tension as well. Or because now you're looking at your partner like, oh my gosh, I hate that she's so relaxed. She doesn't give them any consequences. What kind of parent is she? Or you might look at him and say like, oh my goodness, he don't do nothing. He, he don't know how to change a diaper. He don't know how to do this. Even in a personal story for myself, I had no idea what I was doing as a parent. My husband, same thing. Um, and I remember I did grow a little resentful from him. Um, of him, right? Because he got to leave the house all the time. And here I was with this, my beautiful baby girl, but this baby that I had no idea what to do. And so I'm consulting with myself. And I remember um, him as a parent, you know, 
he, he was just like, at first, he, <laughs> he was just like, well, you know, these are things that you should do. And it wasn't until I could teach him a little bit more to say like, no, this is how I would like our parenting styles to look. Maybe you can be a little bit more softer with the children. Maybe you can do um, a little bit more things that are educational with the children. It started to work and it started to click and it helped with our dynamic. But if you have a partner that is resistant to changing, you have a partner that is resistant to taking any kind of feedback when it comes to parenting, that also makes a very rough, and I mean rough, um, platform to parent, but yet alone be together. And that's something you should really consider. How can we work together as parents? Because if we can't, then this relationship is not going to work. And then it kind of deteriorates. The last thing here, family wounds that have not been addressed. That can truly deteriorate a relationship. So what are family wounds? What am I speaking about? We have your mother wound, you have mother wound, you have your father wounds, you have these wounds from an inner child. If you guys have looked at my previous episodes, um, you can check them out here. I talk about IFS. IFS is internal family systems, and it just says that we have different parts of us that show up all the time. Usually our different parts are there to protect us, and they're protected that wounded part, that wounded part of us that never got a voice or wasn't parented correctly. And if we have our partners that are dealing with mother wound, father wounds, abandonment, father issues, daddy issues, if that partner has not taken the time out to address it, guess where it's going to show up? In your relationship. And from your relationship, it, how do you progress from that? How do you move from that? Can you move from that? It's very hard to do so because now you're in a relationship with a person that you want to be with, but this person doesn't know how to be with you. And you know what exacerbates that? A child, okay? Because now you have a child and this kind of t three and four tie into each other. You have this child that you are with all the time and they're experiencing these wounds. They're experiencing the hurt that you are experiencing. And the hurt hurts a lot right it hurts a lot so much so to the point where you're like oh my goodness I just want this person to be in my life but they can't be with me because they're stuck in that wounded part where their mother hurt them or their father hurt them or their mother wasn't there for them or their mother chose somebody over them and so now you're seeing this pattern repeat in your relationship and then you break up some of these things that I'm talking about are so crucial as adults we need to learn how to push past them, but in a healthy way, in a, in a safe environment, which is why I have the community. I keep telling you this trauma transition elite program is for someone like you, where you're hurting, but you keep smiling every day. You're crying in the bathroom, but you still show up to work, knowing that you want a partner that understands you. You want a partner to heal with, but you don't even know how to heal yourself which is why I'm going to urge you to join the program. It's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. This four-week program is going to help at least get your foot in the door of healing. So make sure you check the link below. As for DDG and Hallie, I'm hoping they are living their best lives as co-parents. I'm truly hoping that everything works out for the best for them because it's it sucks when you can't have a partner that understands you or the partner be who you want them to be. And even if they broke up amicably, because we don't know, um, we only have the words of what was said, it's still important for us to touch on the fact that this child will have a, it probably, he will probably, Halo will probably have a healthy life, but in two separate places, which can also be seen as a blessing. But it's just sad that they will be separated because a lot of the world cherished their relationship. And now their relationship is no longer what it is. All right, y'all. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. Make sure you subscribe. I haven't said that in a long time, but our family, our crew is growing and I am just enjoying every moment of it, guys. Y'all, yeah, my conscious crew and I'm here for it. Let me know what y'all want to see next, okay? I can talk about trauma all day. I can talk about relationships all day, but I really want to talk about what you want to talk about as well. All right, y'all. Walk good and keep the vibes high and I will see y'all in the next episode. Bye.